Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will take a look on the power consumption of Raspberry Pis. To measure the power consumption, we will actually measure the current draw of the Raspberry Pi. To do so, we have an amp meter here on the left hand side with the green numbers. And we have a scope on the right hand side where we will measure the current over the time. To measure the current using a scope, which is normally only measuring voltage, we will use a shunt, which you can see right down here. In case you wonder what is a shunt and how to measure current with a scope and a shunt, make sure to check out our video about exactly this topic. So during the measurements, make sure to keep an eye on the amp meter for the current power draw and also on the scope to see the changes in the power draw over time. The scope is currently displaying a time frame of 20 seconds, so we should be able to see the changes quite decently. For the test, we will walk our Raspberry Pi through different stages of the test. First of all, we will power it up and take a look on the power consumption during boot. To verify at which point the boot process is ended, we will have a monitor connected via HDMI. The display itself has its own power supply, so there shouldn't be any power draw that significant. During the boot, we will also disconnect the keyboard and the mouse, since those USB devices will also be fed through the power of the Raspberry Pi. As soon as the boot process is finished, we will connect the keyboard and the mouse and check what's the difference in the power consumption due to those keyboard and mouse. Once booted, the Raspberry Pi will have the Wi-Fi turned off by default and also the Ethernet won't be connected. So in this stage, we will measure the idle power consumption. The next step is to launch Node-RED and check again for the power consumption. After this, we will connect the Ethernet cable and start transmitting data to ThinkSpeak. So there will be a little amount of data transmission going on, like establishing a connection, sending a value, closing the connection again, and all this will be done via Ethernet. Right after this, we will disconnect the Ethernet again and connect the Wi-Fi. And once more, we will have this ThingSpeak communication going on and all this via Wi-Fi this time, and we can check again. All of this we will check with and without the mouse and the keyboard. The final test will be a YouTube video, so there will be a lot of streaming going on. This also means there is a certain amount of processing going on, of course a lot of graphics going on, and a lot of activity in the flash storage for all this streaming process. Once we ran through all those stages, we will take a look on the next Raspberry Pi and repeat the exact same process. For the beginning, we will start with a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So we started the Pi and it's booting up and we can see a little increase in current draw on the scope, but it's actually quite difficult to see it since the current draw is so unstable and the line is super blurry. So right now I think we can see it better on the amp meter. We're at 0.7 closely, so roughly 700 milliamps, still booting. And we can see that the current consumption gets even more unstable. All right, boot process is completed. So we can see the current consumption is getting more and more unstable. So this line is very blurry. We can see a bit a thicker line, yellow line in the middle. So that's around the average, but there are a lot of peaks for highs and lows as well. In case you're wondering why we're supplying with 5.2 volts at the power supply, actually we're losing about 0.2 volts through our measurement setup. So we will see now exactly five volts at the Pi. I double checked it and I measured and I adapted everything. So we have a clean five volt power supply at the Pi itself. So next step, we'll be connecting the USB devices and check again. So the USB devices are connected and it's actually super difficult to tell a difference since it was instable before and it is now as well. It's a bit less instable, like the peaks are not so high and the lows are not so low anymore, but it's still quite blurry. And I cannot really tell from this if there's a significant higher or lower power draw. So I just started to press some keys and move the mouse. It's a laser mouse, so there should be a kind of a power supply needed to power up those USB devices, but we can't really identify an increase or a decrease. Now I stopped moving the stuff and typing keys and 
yeah, it's super difficult. It's within the tolerance of the pie itself consuming more and less power. So I think for the upcoming test, we can leave the mouse and the keyboard plugged in since it's not a visible difference. So just for reference, we are currently drawing in idle without Wi-Fi or Ethernet activated about half an amp, so around 2.5 watts. So next step, we'll be firing up Node-RED, still with no internet connection, just starting a program and see what's happening. So here we go, Node-RED is starting. Will take a couple of seconds to boot. And here we go, Node-RED is running, so still no significant change in power draw. So let's connect the Ethernet cable and check what's the difference in power consumption. So Ethernet is connected. Pi is still trying to establish a connection. And here we go. Internet connection is established and Node-RED is actually starting to send data to ThinkSpeak. It's just a bunch of numbers and we try to send every half a second, which is actually not working because ThinkSpeak is only accepting new data every five seconds. But nevertheless, the data will arrive at ThinkSpeak and ThinkSpeak will just deny to write the data into the database. But we have a connection every 0.5 seconds going on. Every 0.5 seconds we try to transmit data. So there is a bit of communication going on. And if we take a look on the power draw, it's a bit higher now. I would say roughly 100 milliamps higher than before, maybe even 150 higher than before. So this is the first visible difference in power consumption. I'm also simultaneously double checking with ThinkSpeak if the data is really arriving and that's actually the case. So that seems all to be working. So next step is to unplug the Ethernet cable and fire up the Wi-Fi and take a look on the power consumption in this case. So that's what we will do now. So now the Wi-Fi is turned on but not connected yet. So it should try to search for new Wi-Fi networks. And we can't see a big difference in power draw. Kind of insignificant. Just remember the last video about the ESP boards, the ESP32 especially, there was a big difference in searching for Wi-Fi or being actually connected. But the Pi seems to take this quite easy. Of course, also due to the in total higher power consumption of the Pi. So Wi-Fi on or off is of course absolutely maybe the same power draw, but in relative to the total power consumption, not so much visible. All right, Wi-Fi is connected and we're sending data successfully again, but still no significant change in power draw. Actually, one more thing to mention, Bluetooth is all the time on, but doing nothing, no device is connected. So no communication going on. So now time for our final test, starting streaming a YouTube video. And that's exactly what we will do now. First with Wi-Fi and afterwards with Ethernet again. All right, we just started streaming a YouTube video via Wi-Fi and we can see there is a significant increase in power draw. Now we are drawing like 670, 660, 680 milliamps, 690 milliamps even. So again, on the scope, you can see it's still quite unstable, but there is definitely an increase in power consumption. Next will be the same thing, streaming a YouTube video, but via Ethernet with Wi-Fi off. All right, we just started streaming via Ethernet and we can see also here quite a high power consumption, actually a bit higher than with Wi-Fi. I would have expected it the other way around, but it's maybe also because the Ethernet can provide a higher bandwidth and so far we are preloading more stuff and everything in the YouTube video itself. So this may be also a reason that we have a bit more communication and flash activity going on. So we can also see now it's going down a bit to 0.7 again. So roughly the same with Ethernet, but a bit more. But we cannot say for sure if it's because of Ethernet or because it's a higher bandwidth via Ethernet and preloading more stuff and so on. So before we go ahead, I will quickly show you my setup that you can see that I can really verify everything that's going on. So I will move the camera a bit.
So here you can see the kind of messy setup. It's right next to our actual test setup. And we have the monitor here, which is connected to the Raspberry Pi itself. On the right hand side, my laptop, where I can check if ThinkSpeak data is arriving. So that's all on this table and I will keep a look on this the whole time while we are doing the experiment. So in case you're wondering if Bluetooth is making a difference between turned on and off, we will test exactly this now. We have everything closed, no, no red going on, no nothing, no Wi-Fi on, no Ethernet connected, only Bluetooth on. And we see we're around 0.5 amps again. And now I will turn off Bluetooth. All right, I turned off Bluetooth and we can see no real difference. Again, it's super difficult with the Pi because current draw is so unstable. So I would say maybe there is a bit of a decrease of like 20 milliamps, but it's so unstable, it's really impossible to say. So Bluetooth on or off is not really a big deal. From all this unstable current draw, we can already tell that a major energy consumption goes to the chip itself, to the processing itself, which is of course happening sometimes more intense than the other times. So that's the major consumer here and not the periphery like Ethernet or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or this connectivity stuff is not playing a big role. All right, so that's all for the Pi. Of course, we could go on and do more processing intensive tasks, but that's nothing we want to focus on because we're not focusing on building a media center or a gaming computer or whatever. We are only focusing on IoT purposes where we have normally not a lot of processing going on. I think this YouTube video was already maxing out the processing power we would need ever in any use case. Next up is the Raspberry Pi 4 